Hi, I'm Anthony from Sydney Backyard Veggies. I'm just over here at my second planting of uh, sugar snap peas and I've trellised these at about a week and a half ago. Um, today's video, I'm going to go harvest my first round of sugar snap peas, but I'm also gonna go and go through how I set up the trellis system for this second planting. So this afternoon, I'm just over at my sugar snap peas. Uh, we're gonna do my first harvest for the season. Um, I planted them out about uh, early February as seedlings and, and I've been training them along this string trellis and they've come to a point now where there's a, a big crop um, on, the, on the vine. So I need to go through and harvest them to encourage them to flower more and to give me a bigger crop uh, throughout the season. So at the moment I've had them all uh, mounted to that string trellis system that I've showed in earlier videos and it's actually worked quite well. But my biggest issue at the moment is that it's the, the trellis is breached the top. So I'm actually gonna struggle providing proper support around the, the tops of the plants. Um, but at the moment, there's plenty of flowers at the top. Uh, there's plenty of crops on the plants. So I'm gonna go through now and just harvest them and show you what I end up with. I just wanna bring you closer just to show you the crop. And as, as you can see, there's plenty of uh, sugar snap peas growing. You've got some beautiful looking ones like that. Uh, at the bottom, they're obviously the ones that have been growing for a while. And I've been meaning to pick them earlier, but I haven't. But yeah, it's literally, essentially, I've got peas all the way through, just up to the tops where they've just got the last of the flowers. But I'm hoping by harvesting them now, I'll be able to encourage them to uh, put in a second flush of flowers. One thing you'll notice is that a lot of plants are leaning to the north side of my on my yard, so. This face here is facing north and it, they, they just naturally try to chase the sun. So you're always having to tie the plants back onto the trellis. But I'm gonna go through and harvest them. One thing I did wanna show you is that I do have just the start of some chocolate spots showing up. And as you can see, they're just in at the bottom there. Now I've been using copper oxychloride to control it, but the chocolate spot is inevitable. You will, it will come through your plants in any case. Um, it's just something you have to deal with. Um, the copper spray will slow it down and also will slow down mildew. But look, it is part of growing peas. So I'm gonna go through now and just start progressively harvesting them. I'll be harvesting, well, probably won't harvest ones this small, but definitely you know, ones which have got a, a bit more of a bulge, a bit more of a thicker skin. Definitely something like these. These will be ready to go, as you can see there. And these will be harvested right now. So I'm gonna come through now and just give them a harvest. You'll notice as I'm harvesting, I'm using a pair of uh, scissors. Uh, I like doing that because I find it damages the plants a lot uh, less than if I was harvesting by pulling them or trying to cut them with my fingers. It's just a, an easier trick that I use when I'm harvesting my piece. It just makes for a cleaner cut and it doesn't stress out the rest of the plant. So at the moment, most of my crop is in that lower you know, half of the plant, but there are a few ones at the top that I'm picking as well, but they're like, they're a good size uh, pea. This one may have been just a little bit over. I would have preferred to be a little bit um, skinnier than this, but look, it's, it's what happens when you leave your crop uh, too long to harvest, but that's, should be fine. But yeah, I'm just going through. Now I'm gonna to have to go through the back and check the back of the plants as well. But yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue on now and just see if I can finish off harvesting the rest of the crop. So I've gone through the rest of that crop and I've harvested what I can and that's what I've ended up with. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's close to a kilo of peas. It's always uh, a good idea to plant more peas than you think you need. I find um, you do wait a while for peas to, har to be able to harvest peas. And when you do harvest peas, you want a decent crop so you can cook with them. You know, or make uh, you know, make stir fries or even eat them fresh. But the point is, is you want the harvest to be worth your while. So 
you'd be surprised how little space you do need between the plants. Um, I've got close to 100 seedlings in that patch and they were planted at five centimetre spacings in rows 15 centimetres apart. So they, it, it can fit a lot of plants in the small space um, and they do do well planted closely together like that. Uh, you just got to be careful when you water them that you're not promoting mildew, especially with that closeness. Uh, but if you have them on a string trellis where you are lifting them off the floor and you uh, allow adequate airflow and treating on occasions, either with a copper spray or a milk solution before mildew shows up, uh, you can actually get a lot of crop that will grow healthy and be able to produce enough for you. So um, I'm going to now, that I've harvested my first crop, what I'm gonna do is make sure it's, it's well watered. I've got drip irrigation. I'll make sure they get watered. And I'm gonna actually gonna add a little bit of potash. I'm gonna try to see if I can help that along with additional flowering. So by adding potash, uh, it will promote more flowers. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, after this. And then um, take these inside and you know, give them a wash and store them in the fridge. These won't last long. My children will get straight into these and they'll probably eat them fresh, but I'm gonna try to see if I can save a few for uh, a stir fry. Yeah, so in about a week's time, there's still a few smaller peas in there. So in about a week's time, I'll come back through and do a second harvest. Uh, but I'm hoping in a few weeks, I'll be able to report back that there's been a second flush of flowers through them and then I'll be able to keep harvesting until at least um, August. So this afternoon I'm over at my uh, sugar snap pea planting and today I'm going to have, I'm going to go and trellis my plants. I need to do that now. These are things have been about two weeks in and they're starting to get a bit too long and they won't be able to do well without having some sort of support provided. So I'm going to be using the string trellis method that I used on my green feast shelling peas. So I'm just going to go through now and start setting out uh, my stakes and working through them. So I'm just at the moment just trying to plan out how I'm going to lay out my trellis system. Uh, this row that I've got here is about four meters long. So what I'll be looking at doing is probably putting in a stake at, at each end of the row plus a stake every one and a half meters, one to one and a half meters. So what I'll try to do is, is actually try to locate it one at the one at the top of the arm um, row and probably just every meter or so just have a second stake come in so the next stake will probably be in that location and then just continuing on all the way to the end for my string trellis system i'll be using baleen twine i find it works best in my context because it doesn't stretch over the season and i'll essentially be running the line the string from the first post wrapping it around the intermediate post to keep the string tight and then taking it to the last post and tying it off there i then space the strings at about 10 centimeters uh, height between each of the strings as I go through the season. So I've installed my string trellis system. I've gone and installed three star pickets all the way across the, all the way down the row. And then I've also installed my string line across. So the first string line, as you can see, is just above the tops of the peas. And then the second one's probably about 10 centimeters up. And what it does is it allows the uh, plants to latch onto that first string and start supporting themselves off the, off the floor. Uh, look, I will come through and install these every week or so. Um, and it, as it grows taller, I will support, provide more strings to support the plants. So this is just a quick install from my end. Um, it's very durable and it does what I need to do to keep the plants supported, especially in that crucial time when they start flowering. Um, the wind, when it does pick up, will knock them around. So this is a, a way to keep them supported. 